And good evening, welcome to Washington High School as we proudly present High School Girls Basketball. Tonight, the Section 4-3A semifinal round featuring the Como Park Cougars, the number two seed in this group, Ladies and the St. Anthony Village Huskies, number three. Como Park knocked off the Tino Freaks in the quarterfinal round. St. Anthony Village dispatched Fridley in their quarterfinal. Como Park looking to repeat as state tournament contenders. They won the state tournament slot out of this section last year, knocking off De La Salle. It's game one of a doubleheader here at Washington High School. I'm Mike Peden, and I'm glad to be joining you for what should be a great pair of section semifinal contests. And we'll talk more about the matchup in a moment, but first, it's time for the Star Spangled Banner. time for the starting lineups. For the St. Anthony Village Huskies, it's Bonnie Zeller, number four. Abby Jenny Meehan, number five. Annika Thomas, number 11. Nicole Zielsdorf, number 12. And number 25, Samantha Siddick. Coma Park will start its usual five. Asia Shepard, number one, the senior four. Lane Adams, number 11, the junior guard. Autumn Tucker, number 12, the junior guard. Kayla Van Ness, number 23, the junior guard. And Elena Jones, number 24, the sophomore center. Coma Park, the school we are quite familiar with in our coverage this winter. And Kayla Van Ness scored 41 points. In the win over to Tito Grace, knocking down seven three pointers. Van Nett was two points shy of a season high. Number 23, Michaela Van Nett. St. Anthony Village, number 25, Samantha Sibbett. Cobble Park, number 24, Elena Jones. Tonight, St. Anthony Village head coach, Dan J. Kassler. Assistant coaches, Casey Ginter, Doc Mellis, and Jenny Patrick. For the Cobble Park head coach, Alexis Gray Lawson. Assistant you see coaches, Cobble with their glory game to Hubbard team. Alexis Gray Lawson in her second tonight, season as Cobble Park's Gary head coach. And Tony. Looking to get back to back 20 win seasons. This Thursday, March 9th, at 7 o'clock. Winner will play on Thursday. Thank you for the right to go to state. And Washington, you may know them as the former Arlington High School. The acoustics uh, certainly have a 20 year old feel to it. St. Anthony Village, not a whole lot known about them, but. Erica Thomas, Bonnie Zeller, and Nicole Zielsdorf all had double-digit performances in the win over Fridley. And it is tough to ascertain how much this team can compete because Fridley having a down year without a dynamic score like Suzanne Gilreath. But it's a semifinal round and records go out the window here. For Como, we talked about Michaela Van Nett, Elena Jones, a budding figure in the post. She had a career high 32 points and 16 rebounds in the win over Cromwell Wright a week and a half ago. Como starts things off. Asia Shepard fires, can't hit the three pointer. Rebound is won by Rain Adams. She'll dish out to Jones for a reset. Elena kicks out. Shepard will try again. Off the heel. Shepard 
had nine points in the win over to Tino Grace. And here comes Tucker with the steal. Elena Jones cannot get the fast break layup. She was not set in time. Rebound is picked up by number 25, Samantha Civic. Como bringing the pressure again. Tatino left alone, three on the way. Off the heel from number 12, Nicole Zielsdorf. Here comes Como. It's Autumn Tucker. Too high off the window. Rebound, Abby Kenning Meehan. A lot of action, but no points thus far. Kenning Meehan pulls up, cannot hit the mid-range J. Rebound goes out, long two. Does not fall, and it goes over the backboard, so a dead ball rebound to the Cougars. It took Como a little while to get going in the win over Totino Grace. They had a slow start and had to fight off a resilient Eagles team throughout most of that one. They pulled away late in the second half, but Totino Grace held with them for some time. Vanette, look out. Bullseye. Michaela Vanette, 89 three-pointers coming into tonight. That's number 90. She would need realistically to get out of this game and into the section final to have a chance at back-to-back 103-point -back seasons, and that's going to be a foul on Autumn Tucker. First personal, Autumn Tucker. St. Anthony Village with a little bit of trouble off the inbound. But Civit picks it up. And another foul, this one charged to the Huskies after Como Park read the skip passing lanes and got the steal. Still early in the first half, Como with a 3-0 lead. Rain Adams. Tried to skip. Bounces right back to her. Shepard will try for three again. It can take her a while to get going offensively. Not the strongest offensive asset for the Cougars. But you can't fault her for trying. She will attack and do so relentlessly. No matter how much she struggles. Zarina Sementelli will take the place of Shepard though for the Cougars. Sementelli, a role player for this team, but she did get a season high 10 points and a loss to Holy Angels earlier this year. St. Anthony Village, three on the way. It falls. Samantha Civic. And we're tied at three in the early going. Autumn Tucker, she's got a high arc. And that goes over the backboard, dead ball rebound to the Huskies. Autumn Tucker knocked down four triples. Five overall, four in the first half, and the one over Cromwell Wright. Look out for her. Mid-range J, switch for number 12, Nicole Zielsdorf. And the Huskies with an early 5-3 lead. Vanette drives through traffic. Scramble for the ball, that's gonna be a jump. St. Anthony Village with the arrow. A reminder though, this is really, really early in the game. And we've seen Como Park fight through adversity on a couple of occasions this season. Here come the Huskies. There's a deflection from behind and that's the thing that Como Park does so well. They are not gonna give up no matter what. They always are hustling, and they may not be the strongest team in 3A, but they try to make up for that with their grit. Bounce pass, three ball. That's off the mark from Civit. The rebound will go to St. Anthony Village. And firing the 17-footer and sinking it is number four, Bonnie Zeller. And the Huskies with an early 7-3 lead. Winner plays Matamidi and De La Salle. The winner of that game, I should say, on Thursday. Como Park turns it over. I spoke with Alexis Gray Lawson before the game, and she said, you know, St. Anthony Village, mentally speaking, might have the edge here because nobody expects them, as Simon is hit with a foul. No, that's Vanette. 
Nobody expects the Huskies to be a front runner in this group. Matamidai was the number one seed, and De La Sala ended the year on a hot streak. And so she said, this Huskies team can feel like they can just play. Coma Park has a little more pressure to deal with. Elena Jones almost got the steal, but she stepped on the baseline. 14-20 left in the first half. And the Huskies maintain their 7-3 lead. Baseline shot. Got it. Erica Thomas. Anika, I should say, with her first basket and a timeout for Como Park. 14-15 left in the first half. And the Huskies with a 9-3 lead. St. Anthony Village, as we mentioned, knocked off Fridley in the quarterfinal round in 4-3 a competition. End of the season winning five or six of their last seven games. And if they get De La Salle in the section final, that could be a doozy as well. They went on a tear to start the year, lost their first game, then won eight in a row. Had a bump where they lost three of four, but this is a team like most of 3A, where almost everybody's in it. There are no heavy favorites. Holy Angels is one of the front runners, but it's a wide open field. Tucker too strong. And that's a foul, charged to St. Anthony Village. And Autumn Tucker is slow to get up. And she will be examined by the athletic trainer. Didn't see what happened there. Autumn Tucker had just seven points in the win over Tatino Grace. Gets back up, trying to put weight on her left leg and appears to be doing so. Walking with some assistance, we hope she's okay. Rain Adams dealt with some cramping two nights ago in the loss and they win over to Tino Grace. Tucker is not the primary threat for the Cougars, but if she is hitting her three pointers, look out. Como Park held to just one field goal to start this one. Vanette trying to change that out of position there. St. Anthony Village looking to make a statement here. Nice ball movement, but they could not finish. Looked like Civic came up strong on the layup. Vanette sets up for three. That rims out. Cementelli blocked from behind. Her putback attempt was kind of soft, and Alexis Gray Lawson not pleased about that. St. Anthony Village missed another bunny. Jump ball as Shepard and Sibbett fought for the rebound. Como with the arrow. Cementelli will go to the bench. In her place is number 30, Danica Patterson. So Alexis Gray Lawson tapping into her bench a little more deeply than in the quarterfinal game. Elena Jones threw up a tough shot, but she will shoot two. Elena Jones, the wave of the future for the Cougars, just a sophomore. She had 12 points and 10 rebounds in the section quarterfinal win over Tatino Grace and throughout the regular season was a threat to get a double-double. Her free throw shooting is decent. She was six of nine in the win over Tatino. Shoots about that figure. She misses both though, and Como Park still stuck on three points. Zielsdorf gets it off to Sibbett in St. Anthony Village. Playing a more patient set here. Kenning Meehan. Off to Zielsdorf. Guarded closely by Rain Adams. Bubble bringing a little more pressure here. Now they try to go high low, and it pays off. Cole Zielsdorf. An 11 3 start for the Huskies. Shepard for three. 
And you can tell why St. Anthony Village will leave her open. Yes, that was in transition, but they're not going to see her as a threat. The Huskies score in transition. Annika Thomas. And the Huskies looking to make a statement. Ready to blow this one open. Vanette is fouled, and she will get the shooting motion. Vanette, 8 of 10 from the free throw line, 13 of 18 overall in the win over Tatino Grace. She's the only player to have scored for the Cougars. But we still have a lot of time left. 12-10 left in the first half, and a lot can happen between now and then. Vanette knocks down both, and let's see if that gives the Cougars a little momentum. Ooh, nice elbow shot, working her way open. Was Zielsdorf, but she came up short there. Azaray Jackson, and that's gonna be a foul on Como. That's the drawback Como will have to deal with. As Rain Adams did with the first personal foul. And even when they had Andrea Adams last year, they were not that deep. Most 3-8 teams aren't. Sibbett almost lost it. Jones tried to get the post. And it will stay with the Huskies. St. Anthony Village led by coach MJ Hadler. Again, a team that went on an 8 1 start. And that's going to be a foul on St. Anthony Village. It will be charged to Annika Thomas. First personal, Annika Thomas. And MJ Hadler is going to call a timeout with 11.32 left. In the first half, the Huskies still have a 13 5 lead, and Michaela Vanette, the only player to have scored for Como Park. A pair of back-to-back -back games here. After this, we'll have the Matamidi de La Salle game, and that one should be a lot of fun. Autumn Tucker getting examined by the athletic trainer. You see her on the bench. Looks like she's getting her ankle taped up. And for Coma Park, the key is gonna be who will come out and give Michaela Van Nett some help? Michaela can't do it all on her own. We know that much. 11 minutes and 32 seconds left in the first half. And we return to action here. Van Nett. The dish to Shepard. They do send someone out to get her. Another three is on the way. And that does not fall. That's been the difficulty for Como Park. Not getting these early shots to go in. Shepard out to Jackson. That one's short. Gets her own rebound. Bounces it off to Patterson, but did not have control. Last touch by Zeller. And Kenning Meeham will go in for the Huskies in place of number 30, Jessica Goldsmith. But can the Cougars get going? is reminiscent of their game with Becker last year where they struggled to hit their shots and no matter who you face if they're not going in you're gonna have a tough night another jump St. Anthony Village with the arrow just one field goal for Coma Park in the first seven minutes and 11 seconds of this one and you see this on putback attempts and a lot of high school players are guilty of this they try to throw it up right away. They don't take the time to get themselves in position. St. Anthony Village getting another look from close range, but unable to put that one in was Zeller. Shepard will try to take it herself, runs into a wall, and the wall holds up.
St. Anthony swings it around. They've got a wide open three-pointer. That could have been big for the Psyche, but an offensive rebound and a putback for Bobby Seller. Vanette to Shepard. Jackson has it. Does Cullen Park have anything in the tank? Rest not a factor, and Cullen Park throws it away. They just get flabbergasted. Rest is not a factor with both of these schools playing a pair, or both of these schools playing Thursday night contests. So fatigue will not be an impact for either of these schools. But nothing going right for Coma Park right now. Zeller, long two, that's off the mark. Jones picks it up. And here she comes. Drains the runner. Did Coma Park need that one? It's 15 to seven. St. Anthony Village breaks the press, but has nothing to show for it. They get the O board. Three ball. That's short. O board was lost. Vanette came up with it. And the foul on Annika Thomas, number 11. The last foul to give for the Huskies. 15 to 7, with 8.58 left in the first half. Rain Adams, working off a screen, backs off. That's the good news is you're struggling, but you're only down by eight if you're Como Park. That's taking a couple of cracks from down low, and it finally goes in. Elena Jones doing the cleanup work. Well, that's the beauty of being down early. Alexis Gray Lawson thought Rain Adams stayed in bounds, but the officials say otherwise. But again, Como Park showing glimpses of the pressure defense that has flustered opponents so frequently throughout the season. Dania Riley on the floor for the Cougars, number zero, so Gray Lawson continuing to expand her bench, perhaps to compensate for the game they had to play on Thursday. A scramble for the ball, and that's gonna be a jump Como with the arrow. Como Park, they trim the deficit to six. Vanette fires, and she's fouled. Three free throws coming, and Michaela Van Nett, a solid free throw shooter. She scored 40 points a couple of times this season, averaging 22 a game. Averaging about the same as Andrea Adams did a year ago. If you're a longtime Coma Park fan, you know her nickname, it's Boo Boo, given to her by her father, Michael, who is usually in attendance for Como Park games, and tonight is no exception. And she usually brings a big crowd with her. Vanette, well, a mild-mannered junior, but she is getting more comfortable in front of a microphone, so there's that. She knocks down all three free throws. And it's a one-possession game, 15 to 12. Michaela Vanette with eight points. St. Anthony Village trying to work their way down low. It does not work out. Samantha Civic ran into traffic. Vanette going up in transition, and she draws the blocking foul. And that's what great athletes do. They use their intellect, as Vanette did, drew the foul on Kaden Meehan. It's 
It's the second foul on Abby with 7.36, and that may force N.J. Hadler to go to the bench, and indeed it will. Vanette to shoot two. And slowly but surely, Como Park has reeled in this deficit. They trail by 10. And now they're on their first run. And that will stay with Como as Jackie Krieger tried to get the rebound and couldn't control it. So Vanette splits. She's up to nine. But it's a two-point game, and Como Park has the ball. Vanette will receive the inbound pass from Rain Adams. Jones goes up. Can't get the runner that time, and Patterson cannot corral the rebound. So St. Anthony Village escapes a jam there. But the Cougars have scored the last eight to make it a two-point game. And as we've told you, Como Park is a team that does not get rattled easily. They came back from a late second half deficit to beat Kenyon Wanamingo. They fought off a high-flying Cromwell right team. Baseline shot no good. Another jump, St. Anthony. St. Anthony, Annika Thomas had 21 in the win over Fridley. There's Sibbett. And the three will not fall. Offensive rebound, another scramble, and another jump. It's been that kind of night for both teams. Bonnie Zeller had 18 in the win over Fridley, and Nicole Zielsdorf had 15. So those are three players to keep an eye on as this game progresses. But a pair of jump balls, and we're back to where we started. Rain Adams patiently Falling out the play, goes to Jones. She draws the double, the kick out to Rain Adams. Fires the three, tried to sell the foul. Refs wouldn't buy it. Rain Adams, not a great distance shooter. But she is a gritty hustle player. Not afraid to play through injuries. Baseline drive, Bonnie Zeller scores. Vanette. Time out, Como Park, 6-11 left in the first half, 17-13 is our score. Part of a bevy of section games taking place tonight. Two are here at Washington. Hamlin is hosting a pair of 4A semis in section three. Hastings has a great pair of contests in an all suburban East matchup. Who knows who's gonna get out of there. Como Park trying to follow up on their first state tournament appearance in school history by reaching there in back-to-back -back years. We'll see what shakes out. Elena Jones and one. And this is what Como Park is so efficient at. They use this to their benefit in the win over Totino and won the foul and chase game. So Elena Jones. Makes it a one point game. And Autumn Tucker returns to the floor for the Cougars. That is a good sign. Tucker, as we said, streaky in terms of shooting, but if she catches a stroke, look out. Elena Jones brings the pressure, forces a steal. Tucker didn't have a lane. High low to Rain Adams, and Como Park takes their first lead since 3-0. 18 to 17. Como Park is getting into a rhythm now. A 13 to 2 run, but St. Anthony Village breaks the press and an easy layup. For Jessica Goldsmith. Rain Adams bounces over to Jones. Out of position there. And she'll be hit with a foul. Como had three to give. Uh, not a great foul to take in that situation. 
First, first on Elena Just the first on Elena Jones. Here comes Como bringing the press again. St. Anthony unable to break through this time. Although they do have an opening and a foul. It's on Patterson. So free throws coming for Abby Kading Meehan. She had just four points in the quarterfinal win over Fridley. And we saw shades of this with Tatino. They were able to break through the press on several occasions against Como Park. Como unapologetic about the pressure defense of theirs. They will try to go for steals and get fast break looks. But sometimes it can cost them on the other end. Kenning Meehan knocks down both free throws and it's a three point game in favor of the Huskies. Rain Adams draws the foul and will shoot two. Rain, not the best free throw shooter. She did hit seven of 10 though against the Tino Grace. First now we spoke of the mental advantage that St. Anthony Village might have, again, not having the burden of expectation. Como Park has the advantage in terms of familiarity. With Washington being a host site for the last couple of years in Section 4-3A and Como Park coming here on an annual basis, with Washington being a conference foe, they do have the familiarity of this venue. Rain Adams splits, and it's a two-point game with five minutes to play in the first half. Momo trying to trap St. Anthony in the corner, and it pays off. Shepard gets the steal. Vanette finds Jones. Good luck. Textbook fast break play for the Cougars, and we're tied at Blackjacks. St. Anthony, long skip. They try to catch Como out of position, and they end up losing the ball. Vanette picks it up. She'll bounce it over to Rain Adams. Fires, Swiss. Como Park refusing to quit. 23-21. They lead by two. St. Anthony, they go high-low. Got it. <laughs> Jessica Goldsmith. And now the action's starting to pick up. A stoppage in play. St. Anthony Village called timeout, and that explains the stoppage in play. But how about the last few possessions? 23 23-23. And as the Washington basketball team gets a plug for offering their amenities, as we noted, this school began as Arlington. The school closed down due to low enrollment as uh, students were fleeing the St. Paul School District. Arlington also had a shady reputation it could not shake. Following the rebrand to Washington, things have turned a lot brighter. The school has a powerhouse badminton program. And last year, they got their first state championship on an individual level with the Moos. Moola A and Mooso winning the doubles state tournament. Washington, as a school, finished second. 4.05 left in the first half. We're tied at 23. Como Park overcoming an early 10 point deficit. And this game resembling what a lot of folks were expecting in a battle between the two and three seeds. Wayne Adams fakes the kick out. Jones looks like she was gonna drive, went back out to Tucker. Como swings it around, Rain Adams scores on the baseline. Rain Adams is finding the groove. St. Anthony in trouble. 
And that's a backcourt violation. The double team finally gets St. Anthony Village to crack. Samantha Sibbett lost her footing. And Como Park is assuming control. Rain Adams. Goes off to Van Ness. Weaves through the hole and gets the layup. Van Nett is a shifty one. And at 5-5, she can slide through holes. Van Nett with a deflection. No steal, though. That may open things up for the Huskies. And it does from three-point range. Zielstorf knocks it down to make it a one-point game. And they intercept the outlet. The net. Well, this might fix it. Well, it does, but it doesn't go in. They'll try again. And that one is an air ball. That was Samantha Sibbett who fixed our net for us as that three-pointer rattled out. 27-26 with 2.41 left in the first half. You don't see that too often. Tucker, long skip to Shepard, and that's been a microcosm of Shepard's season. Jones draws the foul, and Como Park gets out of a mess in an unusual way. And again, this is what Como Park likes to do, drive, attack, be the aggressor. And that's the third foul on Abby Kading Meehan. And that's one benefit of being the aggressor. Jones gets her own miss, and she's fouled again. So she'll shoot two more. An amusing footnote to this, early in the season, I covered Como Park's loss to Madison East, one of the top schools in Wisconsin. Jones likes to time the offensive rebounds if she knows she's going to miss. And free throw shooting might be something she wants to work on during AAU and off-season drills, but she would abandon the free throw line early Asia Shepard rips it, deflected off of St. Anthony, so Elena Jones goes one of four in that trip, but Como Park hangs on to it. Now if there's a player you want to foul, Elena Jones is one of them. Vanette goes through the hole and scores, so Como Park extends the lead to four, their largest. It took them a little while to do it. But the second chance effort is paying off. St. Anthony Village, an unforced error. Como Park gets a free ball. Serena Sementelli. Sementelli will return to action. Autumn Tucker will go back out. Wincing a little bit, still being examined by the athletic trainer. See what Como decides to do here. I don't think they'll hold for a final shot. A little early for that. Jones. Serain Adams. Shepard. This is the runner. Rain Adams is there and she's half. Asia Shepard has yet to get going, but again, that has summed up most of her senior season. She struggles mightily and just has not found a consistent rhythm. But Rain Adams to shoot two more. The foul is charged to Chloe Vizeas. And all these free throws are adding up. And St. Anthony getting a little grabby. So the good news is they're fouling 
poor free throw shooters, Rain Adams, Elena Jones, and Zarina Sementelli. The bad news is they keep racking up fouls and sending them to the line. And even if you're not accurate, and a lot of high school teams aren't, Krieger gets called for the foul there to finish up that thought. I'm calling the game and running the wide shot here at the same time. You keep giving your opponent free throws as St. Anthony Village is doing. That can wear you down. And Como can beat you with the battle of attrition. And yes, they're not maybe hitting as many as they would like, especially Elena Jones and Rain Adams, but the important thing is they're getting points and free points at that and slowly extending this lead. Remember, they were down by 10. It was 15 to five. 26 to 11 is the advantage in Como Park's favor since, and that included a 13-2 run. But we still have a long way to go, and talking with a couple of basketball junkies, they noted that this section and a lot of sections in three are like this. There is no guarantee. Whoever gets out of here will have earned it. One twenty-five left in the first half, and Zarina Sementelli to shoot two. Sementelli did not score in the game against Satino Grace. Village gets out of a jam there, and like we said, if you're going to foul people, Sementelli, Jones, Rain Adams, those are the folks you want to send to the free throw line and make them earn it. And that's going to be a foul on Van Nett. One and one coming up for Samantha Sibbett. Sibbett had nine points in the runaway win over Tatino Grace. And that's the second foul on Van Nett. So something to keep an eye on for the Cougars. Alexis Gray Lawson elects to keep her on the floor right now. Sivet misses the front end and an empty possession for the Huskies. Jones to Van Nett. Gets it off to Shepard. Rain Adams draws another foul. So, more free throws coming. Second personal, The foul is charged to Vesey as her second personal. Now, and one thing I'll give the folks here at Washington, they keep track of the fouls. Como Park, they don't. Uh, Como Park keeps blanking free throws. They've struggled as of late. Sementelli blinked her last time up. Rain Adams split in her last trip. And Elena Jones having some trouble as well. Well, Rain Adams gets the second one to fall. And so the lead slowly inching upward for the Cougars. It's now a six point margin. Goldsmith missed the layup. They have broken the press, and those are bunnies you've got to put down if you want to get through to the section final. Van Nett called for the charge. That is a third. Cobra Park likes to drive. St. Anthony was ready for it that time. Van Nett has to go out now with 41.7. So the first bombshell, if you will, of this game. But St. Anthony Village has to manage the foul situation as well. Shepard with the poke and the strip. Will she take it all the way? Yes! 
They weren't going to fall for the charge that time. And Como extends the lead to eight. 17 seconds left on the clock. And even without Van Nett, Como still pressing. It pays off, almost. Ball still live, and this is simply eating up time. And MJ Hadler gets the timeout call. The 10 second clock, I think would have reset, so if St. Anthony Village wasn't facing that scenario, Alexis Gray Lawson looking for an explanation. In any event, I don't know how many timeouts each team has, but that's gonna be another resource to keep an eye on for the second half. 4.4 on the clock, St. Anthony Village down by eight. And even without Vanette on the floor, they are having some difficulty with this press of Como Park. The question is, will it be enough? Mind you, we still have a long way to go. Another 18 minutes to play after this one. And you hear a Como Park fan yelling no foul. You certainly don't want that in this situation. For 4.4, everyone grouping up. St. Anthony can break free. They've got a wide open look and they can get it. And it doesn't look like they will. Civet backed up and that does not fall. So Como Park. Wait a minute. I think a warning has been issued. Autumn Tucker still having some trouble. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. <laughs> well, we're at halftime. I think a warning was issued. In any event, Coma Park will go into the lock-in with a 34-26 lead. But Vanette has three fouls. And Autumn Tucker appears to be hurt. We'll see what happens in the second half. You're watching High School Girls Basketball, the Section 4-3-8 semifinals. Noble Park leads St. Anthony Village, 34-26. Welcome back to Washington High School as we rejoin you for the Section 4-3-A semifinals between Coma Park and St. Anthony Village. Coma Park leads 34-26 after the first 18 minutes. Michaela Vanette, the leading scorer with 14 points unofficially, five of six from the free throw line. Elena Jones with 10, Rain Adams with nine. Zielsdorf and Zeller, your leaders for St. Anthony Village. Zielsdorf with eight, Zeller with six. St. Anthony Village turns it over. And if 
few fans uh, recognize me, but of course I'm a bit synonymous with basketball, so it comes to the territory. St. Anthony Village went out to a 15-5 start as Coma Park struggled to hit their shots. Then the Cougars turned up the pressure, and here's Autumn Tucker back in action, knocks down the three. And showing no ill effects from her ankle injury so far, and it's the playoff, so you're gonna bring it. And that has been another factor impacting St. Anthony Village negatively. Their inability to hit some bunnies. They've had a couple of transition looks come up empty, and that is not what you want to do. Elena Jones from Long, and Elena gets the friendly bounce. So Coma Park extends their lead to 13. And that is how they can beat you. They do not give up on their pressure. They keep attacking. Rain Adams can't hook up on the outlet with Elena Jones. Coma went on a 13-2 run that was part of their comeback. And it's a run that still has some steam. 34 to 11 is the advantage in favor of the Cougars since the Huskies, excuse me, since the Huskies went up 15-5 early. Matamida and De La Salle take the floor after this. St. Anthony trying to go high-low. Foul before the shot. And will go against Autumn Tucker. It's the second personal on Tucker. That was close. Another miss, but the rebound and the putback for Monica Thomas. Thomas had a couple of baskets in the first half. Adams bounces over to Tucker. Back out to Adams. Passes up on the long two. So kick out to Tucker who fires. Doesn't at that time. Jones with the rebound, goes up, and scores. Elena Jones is picking up steam now. She's up to 14. Remember, Michaela Van Nett playing with three fouls, as is Abby Kenning Meehan. Annika Thomas scores again for the Huskies. Rain Adams charges through, goes up and in. Rain Adams. Rain Adams up to 11. So three double-digit scores for the Cougars, and it's the three players you expected to see. Jump ball, Coma with the arrow. to Tucker. Almost lost the dribble. Tucker is there to help. Vanette breaks free. Almost hits the three, but it's picked up by Thomas. Used up the dribble, needs help. Elena Jones steals the ball and almost put that one in. Had she done so, it would have been the play of the game. But she will shoot two free throws. Now, Jones struggled in the first half, as we noted. She does not shoot all that well, about 57% in the regular season. She was 6-9 in the win over Totino, but in the first half, just 2 of 7. However, that is also the third foul in Nicole Zielsdorf, and St. Anthony Village racked up a bunch of fouls in the first half. It's doing them little damage in terms of free throw accuracy, but they keep sending Coma to the line, and sometimes even that can help you win a battle of attrition. Jones blinks again. This has not been her night. St. Anthony Village breaks it. Oh, they had an opening. Well, they get an offensive rebound, so. Oh, Shepard with the deflection. Caning Meehan, the senior, did not recognize that she had a wide open basket. Her back was turned away. 
Had she faced the basket, would have been an easy two. Instead, St. Anthony Village will have to run a set play. That's tough. Especially with this aggressive Como Park defense. They're diving, they hustle, they scramble, you name it. They're not afraid to do it. And getting the leader is Bonnie Zeller. Shepard stayed upright, so no foul, but St. Anthony Village trying to hang tight with this Como Park team. A bump. And picking it up was Samantha Civic. St. Anthony Village on the run. Another miss. And then a traveling violation, a double whammy for the Huskies. MJ Hadler will not be pleased about that if St. Anthony Village moves on. You can bet that will be part of the film review next week. Rain Adams. Over to Jones. Shovel pass to Shepard, but she was blocked. Right idea, but St. Anthony Village stayed with it. Shepard tries to get the poke from behind. Zeller goes up and in. That was Abby Caning Meehan, I should say. And it's a nine point advantage. Tucker for three. With those high arcs, you never know where they're going, but Coma Park, another one and done. And so St. Anthony Village has a chance to pick up some steam. We didn't expect them to fold up. And as we noted, Como Park, they've had some slow starts. And that's a blocking foul on Van Ness. She took a gamble, and it didn't pay off. So Bonnie Zella will get credit for the basket. And she can make this a six point margin here. This will make Alexis Gray Lawson sweat. Six point game. The Huskies have scored the last seven and now Van Nett will have to ride the bench for a considerable amount of time. Reminiscent of last year and there's another foul on Rain Adams. Following the steal, Como Park unraveling here as we said, they have a tendency to start slow in halves. We saw this in the Tatino Grace game. We saw it in the first half of this game. Inbounding it is Zielsdorf. Three ball. That would have been big, but an offensive rebound for St. Anthony Village. Annika Thomas scores, makes it a four point game. A 9-0 run for the Huskies. Tucker blocked, tried the drive, and that's what happens when you're five feet. It can be tough to get that arc sometimes. Jump ball, St. Anthony with the arrow. Rain Adams was a little out of control diving for that rebound, and Como Park, they just look out of sorts. And again, without their floor leader, Michaela Van, Michaela Van Nett. And that, my friends, is how a 13-point lead can vanish in a hurry. It's winner go home, that's how playoffs work. And Shepard wasn't ready for that one. Alexis Gray Lawson looking a bit perplexed down there. And this is what can happen in high school ball. Some teams can fight through it. Others suffer the snowball where one mistake starts weighing on you. It builds up. And then before you know it, nothing goes right. It can be tough to snap out of. Second personal, Danica Patterson hit with her second personal. 
And Koa Park being hit with several fouls here. Thomas shooting two, and she makes it a one possession game. Makes both. Two point margin. Tucker finds Rain Adams, kicks out. Jones will take the three. That's not how you get out of a funk. But Danica Patterson, through traffic, gets the foot back. And Como, did they need that basket? Turnaround does not fall for Kenning Meehan. And St. Anthony Village can't save it. Tucker, outlet to Jones. And she's blocked. St. Anthony Village may have been alerted by the outlet play. You saw Shepard find Jones down low late in the Cromwell Wright game, throwing down the proverbial dagger. Jones. Jump ball, come up with the arrow, but they were lucky to get out of that jam. Jones threw it up. Always tough to do in a double team. You're not going to fault the players for trying, but sometimes you can get a little too aggressive. There's a difference between being aggressive and being smart. Patterson misses the layup. Runner was blocked. And if nothing else, Como is getting a few stops here. This could help with their morale. But they can't give up the ball like that. Samantha Civic scores, allowed Elena Jones to blow by. And Alexis Gray Lawson is going to have to put in Van Nett. So sub in at the next dead ball. Como just looks unorganized without Van Nett running the offense. That would have tied it. Dead ball rebound to the Cougars. Michaela Van Nett entered the game for the Cougars. So Michaela Van Nett will have to play with four fouls. This is not unprecedented territory for the Cougars, though. Andrea Adams, last year in the section championship over De La Salle, had to play the last eight and a half minutes with four fouls. It can be done. You just got to be smart. Elena Jones, out of position, forces the deflection. And that, my friends, is one of the easiest baskets you will get as a high school player. And that was all started by the deflection from Jones. Long two, switch. Nicole Zielsdorf. Danica Patterson too strong. Forty-seven forty-five is the score, so that's what we'll go with until it changes here. Jones saves it. So it's a two-point game as it stands right now. Van Nett bounces over to Rain Adams. And 49-45 is our score. So Como Park getting some looks down low. Three ball. Yes! And Paul Zielsdorf scores. 49-48. Timeout, Como Park. So the seesaw continues. The largest lead for either side has been 13, held by Como, St. Anthony Village. Their largest lead was 10. And here we are, looking at a one-point game. And we have another game to go. Matamina and De La Salle will take the floor. About 20 minutes following the conclusion of this matchup. Plenty of drama to go around. But again, as we noted in the first half, 3A, not a deep class. And we've seen it throughout the season. A lot of 3A schools struggled against 4A opponents. And even against each other, there was some volatility 
in our matchup. So, there is no guarantee in the 3A field about who is going to win the state title, and we've seen some upsets already. In 2A, the defending champion, Plainview Elgin Millville Bulldogs, knocked out by Winona Cotter in the quarterfinals. In Class A, Mankato Loyola, a top 10 school. They were knocked out. So upsets are common here in the lower classes. Holy Angels won the state title as a five seed last year. Deflected off of St. Anthony, it will stay with Como. Nine oh eight left in the second and a one point game. 49-48 is the correct score. Who will be the one to step up in the clutch? Autumn Tucker, long three. She misses. Jones tried the kick out but was in traffic. A scramble for the ball goes to Van Nett. She fires, can't bank it in. That was a little outside her range. The rebound is won, and Rain Adams gets a friendly roll. Como Park, if they got style points, they'd be getting a few of those tonight. Turn around, no good. Rebound goes to Tucker. She tries the outlet. Rain Adams finds Shepard. Players all over the place. And Asia Shepard had an easy lane. Como getting some much needed separation. The lead goes back up to five. Here comes the pressure again. Deflected off of Como, but St. Anthony Village will have to be mindful of Como's defensive stance. 808 left. And if you think this game is tight, wait till you see the semifinal. I've got a feeling even the championship round could be a thrilling one. Como Park trying to read the pass and open on the baseline, but missing the J was Zeller. Shepard wins the battle for the rebound. Gets the pass off to Tucker. Off the window and in. Rain Adams with a little bit of a bump, nothing called. Drive and an easy layup. Monica Thomas. Oh boy. Every basket, a big one here. Van Nett, outside her range. Tucker, not giving up. Missed again. Jones wins the battle. Goes up, and will shoot two. But again, free throws have not gone well for Elena Jones. So if you're gonna foul somebody, I think St. Anthony Village will take their chances. The foul is on Zeller, her third. Several St. Anthony players have three fouls. And Elena Jones, making sure she's okay. to the point I made about snowballing, that can take place at the free throw line as well. I'm sure Jones is trying to approach each trip as if it were her first, but when you see so many rim out, you start to wonder, will any of them go in? And she blinks again. Two of 11 now is Elena Jones. Side fade, no good. They'll fire the three instead, and that's short. Offensive rebound, no putback. For the Huskies, they get another one, and this time it goes on. Samantha Civet makes it a three point game. Long skip to Van Nett. It goes back out to Tucker. Goes high off the window again, can't put it down. Jones was fouled while going after the rebound. She had position. It's a side out for Como, though. If you're Elena Jones, I don't think you mind too much because uh, you avoid that dull guard free throw line. Yeah. 
Shepard out to Vanette. Again, Vanette playing with four fouls. Jones out to Shepard. She misses a three. Simic blows by and scores. And Vanette, knowing she has four, had to let her go. Riley, that's a walk. Coma Park with some big wins throughout the season, but again, they don't have the depth and they had to face the task of navigating without their do-everything player in Andrea Adams. They've got some solid players who will be figures on this team for next year. And St. Anthony Village not going away. Monica Thomas gives the Huskies the lead. What was a 13-point deficit is now a one-point lead. And Coma Park, they got to find something. Asia Shepard missed again. Three on the way. That would have been big for St. Anthony Village. Their fan base would have erupted had that gone in. Rain Adams stops, pops, and draws the foul. And for both of these teams, whoever wins, I'm sure that Matamidi and De La Salle will take notes of what they saw in this first game. As we noted, no clear favorite. Matamidi was the one seed, but everyone is a bit vulnerable. And Como Park still struggling. Jones will go back in. Rain Adams gets the back end. But all these missed free throws will haunt Como Park if they're sent home tonight. Pass intercepted by Jones. Shepard having trouble. Van Eck gets it across the timeline. Jones finds Shepard. Bounce pass to Rain. Draws contact, nothing called, but Rain scores anyway. And Como retakes the lead. High risk, high reward play for the Cougars and a foul on Elena Jones. Second personal, Elena Jones. Just for second, but the Cougars with one foul to give. And that was uh, the gamble you take with the basketball variant of the pick six. And Vanette couldn't get inbounds in time. Jones had to steal and instinctively pass to Vanette forgetting that she was out of bounds. So Como Park unable to make use of that turnover. St. Anthony off the screen. Another three goes in. Nicole Zielsdorf. Autumn Tucker left alone. As she struggled in this run. But she gets the ball. Threw up the circus shot and it goes in. A photo finishes brewing. Three ball. Corner pocket. Seals slump again. Jones. The lob to Vanette. Tucker. Again. Missed everything. And that's the third foul on Jones and the last to give for Como Park. Third 3.58 left, St. Anthony up by two, 62-60. Monty Zeller will go back in and place her Krieger. St. Anthony Village looking to get on the radar of just about everybody. And they have that chance here. A win over Como Park would certainly draw attention. Monica Thomas drives and scores. 
The Huskies on a roll. Season on the line. Van Eck kicks out to Rain Adams, missed the three-pointer, and Como Park just unable to hit from distance. They bring the pressure again. St. Anthony breaks it. And that's a foul on Tucker. So free throws coming for Abby Ketting Meehan. And that was on hand to see Como Park and Tatino Grace. Como won as expected, but they looked vulnerable in that one. Again, not having a dynamic playmaker like Andrea will leave your team more volatile. And St. Anthony extending their lead. And if they hang on to win, the free throws could play a big difference. Como Park getting to the line frequently. It's St. Anthony knocking them down. The lead is now six. Como was up by 13. St. Anthony reeled that in quickly. And Como Park throws it away. Series of skips, no good. But Coma Park, unaware about the rebound there. Now a three, goes in! Fieldsdorf knocks it down, and that might be the dagger. We may have another upset on our hands, folks. Autumn Tucker goes out to Jones. She fires and can't hit. And Coma Park looks like they might have finally run out of gas. Coma Park stuck at 60 for a while here. St. Anthony drives, misses. Coma Park, they need points and they need them quickly. Alexis Gray Lawson will call a timeout. A 13-2 run for the Huskies and they lead by nine with 221 left. And barring a miracle, it appears Como Park will not get back-to-back -back state tournament appearances. They've done their best to battle through a season where a lot of folks probably didn't give them a lot of credit. And they've reeled off some big wins. Cromwell Wright, the number four team in Class A. They beat Matamidi back in January. They played Holy Angels competitively. But how about St. Anthony Village? Abby Kading Meehan. Hanukkah Thomas, Nicole Zielsdorf. Thomas and Zielsdorf do a particular, proving quite valuable. And we looked at St. Anthony Village's schedule earlier. They real lost some impressive wins. They knocked off Chicago Lakes and Carmen Backus was on the squad. They beat De La Salle. Beat St. Croix Lutheran in the second meeting of the year. So they haven't been a pushover. They did lose to Holy Angels, but as we've seen, the first step is getting to state. And as we saw last year, who knows what can happen. Vanette is fouled and will shoot two. So that will stop the clock at 2.07. So this St. Anthony Village team, if they hang on, they certainly deserve this opportunity. Vanette missing. And Como Park, as we noted, they'll have a couple of key pieces next year in Vanette and Elena Jones. So they will have another chance. Where they are seated, that is to be determined. The reclassification will take place after this year, but they will be a force in 3A. They do force the traveling violation, so with two minutes to go, it's not over. But Como Park hasn't shown me a lot to suggest that they can rally back. But, as we said, 
First step is getting there, and when it comes to playoffs, there's never an easy game, unless you're Hopkins. Tucker. Find Cementelli. They'll go to Rain for three. It's not who they wanted to set up. Here comes St. Anthony. Well, they won't get the fast break play there. So St. Anthony Village, it appears their upstart bid will continue with 145 to go. And they will face Mata Midai or De La Salle. I know a lot of folks were hoping for a rematch between these two schools. Mata Midai, or I should say De La Salle and Como. That's the last foul to give for the Huskies, but again, Como has not shown a lot of signs yet that they can contend with St. Anthony Village. Vanette fires the three, and that's short, and Vanette could not get going from three-point range tonight. And it will stay with Como. She has just one by my tally and had seven in the winner of Tatino Grace. St. Anthony Village doing a superb job keeping her from going off. And here's Vanette will fall short of the 100 mark. Stoppage in play by the officials here, 127 on the clock. Steal by St. Anthony Village, that'll do it. Vanette can't foul and St. Anthony Village calls a timeout. That should just about do it. And Como Park, a school that had played well, they'll be going home in the semifinal round. As we said, a lot of folks were hoping they'd get another crack at De La Salle, but that doesn't appear it will be the case this year. Again, I don't have point tallies here, but I don't have the point tallies, but it appears that Zielsdorf and Thomas were your big name players, Samantha Sibbett too. And a team that not a lot of folks were familiar with will have a chance to break through the Section 4-3A field and play for the state tournament title. Como knew their journey would be tough, having to find new leadership and also having to deal with a wave of bad press. As Bonnie Zeller faces this one. And so to see them put together the season they did was remarkable in its own right. But it won't be enough. Final minute, St. Anthony Village can run out the clock. Como might try to play foul and chase, but it will not matter. The Huskies, how about their grit? They were down by 13, fought back. Como was out of sorts, and the Huskies will move on to play here Thursday night and have a chance to play for a state tournament title. Como Park suffered a long drought St. Anthony Village, they're not going to attack now, and Como trying not to foul and get the steal. There it comes, but it's too late. And Alexis Gray Lawson will send in some of her deep players, because this is it, as we said. Winner go home in the section round. And here come the deep players now with the game in hand. A tough way for Como Park to end its season and ring shades of their loss to Becker in last year's 3A state quarterfinal. Free throw missed, but St. Anthony Village will let time expire. They don't need to do anything here. The Huskies 
come back from 13 down. And we'll play for a state tournament first. Samantha Civet scores another basket. That did beat the buzzer. Como Park absolutely stunned. 73-61 the final. That basket from Civet Academic. Como Park season comes to an end. And again, reminiscent of how they went down against Becker last year in the state quarterfinal round. St. Anthony Village moves on with a 73-61 win. They will face the winner of Matamidi and De La Salle. A great game all around. And St. Anthony Village, their three-point shooting, their free throw shooting, the intangibles, they came up clutch. Coma Park did not, and that was the difference in this one. So that wraps up our coverage of game one in our doubleheader in the 4-3A semifinal round. We'll be back in about 20 minutes for Matamidi and De La Salle. St. Anthony Village moving on to the Section 4-3A championship. <laughs>